How's it going everyone? Welcome back to Real Northern Bass. The last two videos that I posted covered both the baits and our best locations when it comes to ice out bass fishing. We also have about 50 to 100 different videos on the channel over the last several years that really hammers home like perfect examples of our success with everything that we talked about. One of the things that we talk about a lot but we almost never show on the channel is when things don't go well and we struggle. What does that mean? What does that look like? And more importantly, what do you do in those instances? What you do largely depends on what happened during the day. And I would like to think that I'm going to eventually learn from my mistakes and not keep repeating some of the same mistakes I find myself doing in these cold water scenarios. But what I'm hoping to do is with this kind of retrospective look at what happened this past weekend, you guys can understand some of the pitfalls that we fall into as anglers, because I know I'm not alone in this, and hopefully that'll help you avoid these yourself when you find yourself doing the same things, facing the same situations, and hopefully make it a much better day than either a skunk fest or only one or two fish. Now, before we get into it, do me a favor, please. If you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel. Even just leaving a like on the video or leaving a comment is immensely helpful for us. If you do leave a comment, I'm always checking it every single day and I respond to everything. So this is going to be a little bit about me in the front of the camera and then cutting back to a little bit of footage from our past weekend to show how something that is a constant pitfall for me are false positives or really outliers is what they are. And something happens that lines up just perfectly with everything that I had talked about because I'm what I talk about is based off of years and years of experience myself on the water. So what happens when you go out, one of the first one or two things that you do checks off every single one of those boxes and then nothing happens for the rest of the day. You just don't understand how to pivot. Let's look and see what happened to start this and then we'll expand upon what I should not have done, what I should have done, and how I fell into that, that trap. Oh. Alright, let's see how this jig rod works. There's a fish. Oh yeah. Oh my god, they're all over the bottom right now. I'm going for jig first because I want to feel this. <laughs> how deep is it? Oh, 25? 30. Nice. Dude. Fish everywhere. Got him. Yeah, guy. <laughs> oh, this rod's nice. That might be, that might be decent size, actually. Uh, yeah. I am gonna ask. I know the drill. <laughs> yeah, no, don't even. Sorry, Steve. <laughs> don't worry about the net. <laughs> dude, dude, dude. Wow, he's cold. Hey, look at that. Thank you. Yeah, he's fat too. Get her done fast. <laughs> Time to start this year off way better than last year. Oh my god, I love this rod already. That felt really good. I bet it did. Oh, look at all those fish. Yeah, I just put that over their head. Nobody moved. So right out of the gate, as soon as I drop the trolling motor, we see fish. Andrew fires out a jig, and it's one of those what we always talk about. Beast Coast Open Water Sniper, it's the MB Pumpkin, so it's a 22 strand version. And had a 2.8 inch slow flow uh, swim bait trailer on the back from Beast Coast Fishing as well. First cast, sticks of fish. That was awesome, but also problematic for me in the long run. We were out deep. We were on, from a steep bank coming down, it flattens out and it stays flat for a little ways. So at this time of the year, I will come up to that flat start out deep and work my way up to the bank and especially if there's structure in that particular area I'm starting at then yeah I'm gonna work deep and work my way up to it checked off every single box with that first fish they were at the bottom of that flat very very close to but just a little bit off the beginning of that bank they were out 30 ish feet which is like a perfectly good money spot for us at this time of the year and they bit the thing that we like throwing the most but we saw a stack of bait we saw a stack of bass and then boom Andrew hooks a fish first cast that was awesome because hey Literally everything we looked for, the fish were there, and we put one in the boat. But it was also bad because it had everything we were looking for, and we put a fish in the boat right away. So what I found myself doing later in the day that I tried to correct, but albeit way too late, was I fell into the pitfall of having that first false positive, an outlier of a catch, drive my decision-making the rest of the day. There were other areas that we did try to look at, but the vast majority of those areas were similar to everything else that we had found those fish in to begin with. For the next six hours, we spun our wheels trying to replicate that bite. On this particular body of water, there was probably six or so other spots that mimicked almost everything to a T where we caught that first fish. And we went through and we hammered it. 
with every technique I've ever talked about and some that I almost never talk about, tried every different color variation on baits that we had and just while we were seeing fish, and especially with Active Target, we see they were reacting, trying to get the commit was a completely different story. We couldn't get another bite until later on at the end of the day, almost, oh boy, I think this was like in the last hour. Now this was seven hours after we had put the boat in, I finally caught my first fish of the day, and this time went back to Demiki Rig. There's a stack of bait right below us. Really? Yep. I mean, for all we know, those could be smallies. Those are smallies. Are those they? are those are bigger. Really? Look at this. Oh wow. Good. Oh. Got him that time. Good. Smallie. Yeah, all right, I did it. Hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Can I get a picture, please? <laughs> yep. <laughs> Just because we're on the struggle bus. Oh, God, I'll put it on day. .5 so it looks huge. <laughs> there you go. Thanks. Yes. I dropped it down and he came right back. I know, I saw I watched. <laughs> it was sick. So, while trying to fish that same pattern that produced one fish at the very beginning of the day, did eventually produce another, I really do feel like that we didn't try our best to really change what we were doing to try and make the most out of this. When we're fishing at this time of the year, and we have a situation like that first thing in the morning, we know roughly where the fish should be, we went there, and we found immediate success. And now, for the next several hours, we tried to replicate that. Not only in that specific spot, one other time, maybe an hour after we first caught that fish, but also all the other similar areas. But we didn't try going into the opposite end of the extreme of where they might be until much later in the day. Now, that's typically okay, and that's going to work out for you in plenty of other cases. In this time, it didn't. What we did do was, because of this time of the year, a lot of it comes down to timing. There may be fish that hunker down in one area, and they'll stay there all day, but they're only going to eat in very defined windows, and that window is not consistent. We went back to that same spot twice. So again, about an hour after the first fish, and then we went back later on about 2 o'clock where I finally caught my one and only fish for the day. That was a good thing. To be able to, knowing that they're there, and understanding that at this time of the year you're going to have different feeding windows for these fish at different times of the day, but it's wildly inconsistent, for the most part, it was nice to be able to go back and at least get one more fish out of it, and maybe we just narrowly missed it, we were too late, or narrowly missed it, we were too early. I think it was too late because we stayed on that spot for another 45 minutes and still only got the one bite that whole time. What else can you do in these situations where you have that false positive that's giving you the confidence to at least think that, yeah, I'm on the right path and this is the way I should go about continuing to tackle it. But now you're on hour two, three, four, spot five, six, seven, and you haven't caught another fish. So at that point, is it still timing based or do you really need to drastically change the way you're thinking about approaching it more often than not it's the latter one of the things that i failed to do because that's still a hard lesson for me that i need to learn is not letting a false positive drive how i'm going to approach the rest of the day yes there was fish there yes we caught a fish however by like the third hour i'm pretty sure it's not going to happen again or at least that's what i should be reminding myself so what can you do to change that one of the things that we didn't do was really try to isolate other areas where we covered the deep side of things thoroughly. We went out to the main lake and nothing happened. But we didn't do a really good job of combing the entire lake, and it's not that big of a lake, to comb it in that mid-range zone. We went for our highest probability areas of success out deep. We checked around out in the middle, kind of like main lake around those areas. And then we went up to like the next best kind of transition areas because at this point we we're fishing on the very end of a warm stretch of weather here in new england none of that panned out what's left we tried covering all the structure we tried covering the deep we tried covering the shallower transition areas we did not do a thorough job of checking the only other spot we didn't look which is kind of that mid-range and that could literally just be a difference of five to ten feet in water depth that we did not adequately scope out of that whole pond, we covered probably 60% of the surface acres, which is a lot, even for a small body of water in a bass boat. Like, if you think about effectively fishing through it, or I should say at least covering a large area of water, you cover 60% of a 300-acre lake. Like, that's a lot of water to cover in one shot. But there were still other areas that we didn't look at. 
going back to some of the other topics we've covered, and especially in that last video, like covering dwell areas, we did a very poor job of going back and circling on that to see, okay, well, maybe because we've had this stable weather at a more consistent depth at this point, even with the water being as cold as it was, it was 37 degrees in the main lake and it got as warm as 39 and a half degrees in some of the shallower, like mid to shallow range areas that we looked at. We didn't look because I made the mistake of letting that outlier, that false positive first thing in the morning, drive my attention and focus. And the thing I find that I still constantly make mistakes with is not stopping fishing for just 10 minutes to kind of let my brain settle down, stop getting input that I'm getting from every single cast because that's just the way I am as a person and that translates into the way I fish where I'm constantly trying to dissect every single aspect of every single cast. I should have given myself 10, 15, 20 minutes, whatever it was, to be able to just sit down and really think, okay, what have we done? And what have we not done yet? What's left in that area of not done that makes the most sense? And are there multiple spots that kind of fit that criteria that you could go through? That is by far the best advice I can give in these situations. As much as we all want to go out and put in the research, and try to have the best days that we can there are going to be days where you don't have the answer and that's got to be okay because even the best angles in the world are going to go out there and get their teeth kicked in every once in a while and that's even in ideal conditions you're trying to find fish in by far the hardest conditions that you will face all year long don't beat yourself up over a tough day of cold water bass fishing because this isn't easy nothing about this is easy we can make it easier but that doesn't necessarily make it easy keep an open mind and don't get tunnel vision. That's the biggest lesson out of all of this. And it's a mistake that I often find myself repeating. I get tunnel vision at this time of the year. Later on when the water's warmer, I find myself not making that same mistake over and over again. But man, when it comes to that cold water, and especially where I don't get out as often as I want, so my desire to fish and try and put a fish in the boat will outweigh my common sense. Like, hey, idiot, you haven't caught a fish in six hours. Maybe you should try to do something really different. I let myself get caught up in my own excitement and that tunnel vision of seeing my buddy's success not let me go through the natural progression of trying to figure out the bite for the day. You just need to continue to eliminate the things that you've already tried and try something else. And if literally everything fails, then you got to understand that it's sometimes, especially this time of the year, lakes just don't turn on. December, January, February, and sometimes even a little bit into March, these places should be covered in ice. That water's cold. These fish don't always feed, and especially where I only get out to get on Sunday, like trying to fish one day of the week, you have to get really lucky that their bite window, their feeding window, which is much, much shorter and narrower and less often than it would be in warmer water, like you got to get lucky that those things are going to line up. It's all in perspective, right? You consider everything that can happen and goes on and then the things that don't happen too it's not easy don't beat yourself up if you're out there and you're not slaying them every single time you go out because they're not always eating really well every time you go out but learn from my mistakes don't get tunnel vision if you go out there you take all these things and again nothing's panning out what's next that would be most logical and sometimes it can be illogical you're like okay well i've you know water's 38 degrees and it's been kind of warm but not really nothing's out deep screw it i'm gonna go beat the bank in one foot of water there's been days when that's worked out for us too although exceedingly rare it's not out of the question of possibility that that could have been where they were we just didn't look there because it's not a place that i would typically bring myself to and even with all the experience and knowledge i've gained over the years dude even sometimes we still get our teeth kicked in so do the best you can enjoy the time on the water more than anything i get mad in the moment but then on the drive home i remember you know what it's the middle of winter. I'm still on my bass boat, and that makes me happy. Hopefully, just taking this from a different perspective than I normally would with any other video will help either kind of help you better understand what can happen out there in this cold weather season, but at least, if not, give you the confidence or peace of mind when you're out there either finding success or struggling like we did last weekend. I really hope this is helpful. Again, thank you all very much. Appreciate it as always. If you haven't done so, subscribe to the channel. Turn on post notifications. If you did enjoy this, leave a like. If you didn't, totally understand if you want to leave a dislike. Either way, if you can, please leave a comment. And I'm going to go above and beyond and ask anybody that's willing and interested, if you could please share the video. I, and I mean, literally anywhere. Word of mouth is by far the best method for us to grow inside of this realm. And I'm really looking at 2024 
as a an incredibly important year and i'll leave it at that so with the community's help we can hopefully reach goals that i have in mind but if not no worries no pressure from me thank you all very much catch you in the next one